So let me tell you guys a story. So yesterday, uh, I didn't talk about it, but uh, I didn't have any high hopes. And this is for a good reason. I didn't think the person was serious enough or I didn't take him seriously when he asked me for services for today. So I came to Manhattan and I decided to wait for his phone call. And it turns out he never called, he never emailed or applied to his email or text message, ladies and gentlemen, even though I can see from my end that he read his text message. So with that said, everyone, I don't like doing business or photography business in New York that much. And this is why I was trying to like emphasize with this guy. I'm like, yeah, he's like, are you available Sunday? I need someone Sunday. I said, like, yes. And I've been waiting since like nine o'clock this morning, patiently from Brooklyn from one point to Greenpoint and to Lower East Manhattan, then Soho, and then back here. And still no reply. So with that tell everyone, yeah, I thought that was going to be my ticket to get into maybe the hostel for the night and to Monday because it's extremely cold outside and it's extremely cold outside. Like you can feel the Canadian in air. Oh, oh, that's right. You're talking to one. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. It's like refrigerated. It's cold. It's cold. And this, mind you, earlier today, it did kind of warm up. If you stand in the sun for too long, but it's like, yeah, it's not possible to get. But anyway, guys, so I came inside of Starbucks. You know, they can say it's uh, but I was waiting for another reply back from someone, and that's not giving me no kids. So I want to ask you guys a question. Now, I need to pay for a very serious storage bill back in Vancouver for myself. And should I gamble? The storage unit money to get a hustle for the night or should I just like pay for that because that's what my belongings back in Vancouver <laughs> and sometimes it's like a storage unit place it would charge me sometimes a day before or the day on the day that it needs to be issued so that's why I'm kind of hesitating so I don't know what do you guys think what I should do about that like because it is, it's extremely cold, and I kind of want to be indoors right now, and I do feel like I'm getting sick. My, my throat hurts. <laughs> so, to, so, Britt says, take a chance. Uh, okay. But you realize what's in Vancouver, right? I'm talking about, like, other studio stuff, the flash screen TV, furniture. Yeah, <laughs> all that stuff. But I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to charge me tonight for it or tomorrow for it. But I don't know, guys. I, I literally, like, because I pay it every six months. So, yeah. And I've been secretly holding off on it. But anyway, what's up, David? Just watching people throw the fees like popsicles outside. <laughs> so, yeah, early today, I was supposed to meet some some guy. Uh, that I've, like, I, that wanted some so-called services, and, you know, and turns out he responded last night, been emailed multiple times, but this morning and today, not even doing his text message, like, okay, you're just going to know me on purpose, okay, at least have the courage to tell me, no, we're not going to do business together, all right? See, this is why I don't like doing business here in New York City, because people are either not being honest with me about their situation or that they're afraid that they, they might screw up on a relationship between themselves and I, and which you already did that when you not respond to your email to your text messages, friend. And so with that said, if you see my video, friend, you know who I'm talking to, you, sir. And I think it's very inappropriate that you you call someone, you ask for services, you're like, yeah, yeah, I guarantee it. And then like, it gave you the benefit of the doubt. Uh, so with that said, everyone, yeah, gave me the benefit of the doubt. And that's what I'm going to say for now. But uh,
Yeah, but it's very unprofessional that people do this quite a bit here in New York City. So I'm emphasizing why I like, I am not so sure if I want to take a gamble on because, was, uh, yeah. Reflections. Anyway, I'm just, I don't know, I'm like kind of like confused what I want to do now. Like this guy wasted my whole entire Sunday. Like, and mind you, last night he kept talking to me into all the way into midnight. That's the thing, guys. He kept replying all the way into midnight. Oh my panda. Like, you sure you come? Like, we can read, we can shoot. And I don't mind shooting in the cold, but like, this is why I was posting those images uh, on the. If you guys go to the YouTube community, I post images of what I was going to get ready to shoot, and I thought I was, but yeah, this this wasted time. So with that said, everyone, I'm not very in a nice. Listen, I'm not rude to you guys. I'm just not in a like best of moods, you know. I'm disappointed all the time. People always ask me for services, and then they want to either lowball me or just can you do it for free? Like, do I look like an amateur? To, uh, no. <laughs> Come on, friend, not doing anything for free. See, but the thing is that, like, Brent, you have to understand what I just said is that he emailed me last night. This is like last minute, last night, like. So imagine going through my mind right now, like, oh, who's this person emailing me last night about services, right? And told me he needs me for a shoot, a short shoot on Sunday. And I told him my price. He said it was fine. He's like, he was expected more, blah, 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 right? And he kept emailing me after I said negotiated. He kept emailing me, emailing me, emailing me. Yeah, I think so too, David. Douchebag moves. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's a very douchebag move. Oh, my panda, man. Look at that. It is really fucking brutal out there. You can feel the Canadian Arctic air this time around. You can feel it. After last night, you can feel it. And everyone's feeling it. I told you guys, I warned you guys in New York City. Didn't I warn you guys, like, two weeks, three weeks ago, I'm like, okay, we're going to get this stretch of nice weather and watch. We're going to get a brutal winter, like, taste of what what's to come of winter. And look what happened in Buffalo, New York. Ground wrecking 77 inches, maybe 80 inches, apparently. That's a historical record of snowfall. I told you guys, winter of 2022 to 2023 is probably going to be the East Coast's worst winter. Yeah, so I uh, it, trust me, you know, you like you can tell when climate's changing and these weird events happening in the winter. It's not even winter, it's still autumn. <laughs> it's still autumn. It's not even close to winter. Well, you can say it's around the corner, but still. Yeah, you guys got to throw. We got to blister in Arctic air, which this is why I was outside or most of the time, right? And everyone's like, you're not cold. I'm like, I am. I'm just patiently waiting for this guy. Patiently waiting for this guy. Literally, patiently. Really standing out there waiting for this guy in charge of my phone. So I'm telling you guys, like, I literally am a honest man who was waiting for this man, like, out there. And he's literally don't understand, like, dude, I'm committed, and you guys don't understand how committed I am with my work. You give me, you are a client. I want to make my, I want to make clients or my new friend happy. But obviously, you didn't want that experience, so take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> I was like looking forward to making a, a video, you know, a small commercial for this guy. It's like, 
small little upcoming business, you know? It's like, even though it's not his first business he said, but you get what I'm saying? It's just like, just wasting people's time. That's not very nice. So, what out, what's out there it is terrible. <laughs> oh, my panda. So I'm not decide, I'm not sure if I want to spend my storage money on just one night of, of the hostel or just pay for my storage when everything else is safe. <laughs> and just deal with the brutal fucking nature of... Because mind you, the, the, the temperature is going to increase even lower tonight than last night. So that's the, the part that I'm kind of concerned. Even though like I'm trying to conserve my night and trying to kind of do the best I can... Oh, my panda. And, yeah, so. I don't understand that either. It's like he either got scared or flunked out. or I don't know, friend. It was like, yeah. And mind you, he was watching the live stream last night. <laughs> he even told me in an email, like, fuck that dude. He's like. He's like, fuck that black dude. Like, you, you know, he's saying, fuck Victor. You know, like, fuck that dude. Like, and he was like, tell, asking me, like, how did I admit that guy? I was like, he's a former rollerblader. I don't really skate with him. I don't really hang out with him. I've never really actually had a meal with him or even had a drink with this guy. <laughs> Victor and I are not that close. Like, he's just a rollerblader that I know from, you know, he was one of those really good rollerbladers back in the day. And he's, you know, it's into other things, but whatever. But yeah, that everybody, like, this is why he was like, this is why he kept emailing me. He's like giving me confidence and all this stuff. And then it, today they showed me like that confidence is still there. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not losing my, my attitude or my demeanor about negotiating a business with someone else. But with you, friend, you just lost points. That's all I'm saying. You just lost points, friend. That's all I'm saying. And yes, I'm using the, the YouTube uh, app to do this live stream. Like, you guys are like, wow, it's so shaky. I'm telling you, the app sucks and it's not very well. And the handhold in this, by the way. So I'm kind of disappointed. They're like, I sit here and, you know, I even go, I even took Jonathan's donation today, $10 donation, and bought a hot tea. Yeah, that's hot right now. So, well, now, yeah. and, and that's all I had. And, and like, because I'm literally trying to conserve money. Because these are the times, like these winter harsh days are the times where I should spend money. And those other harsh days of me traveling or like saving money is when I can save money for these harsh days like this. Even when it snows or it's brutally cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a traveler, you, yeah. No, Empress Cloud. It's a green tea. It's too dry for me. That's why I don't like the Empress Cloud. It's too dry. Starbucks closed at 8.30. It's going to close in like two hours. So, yeah, I only have a short time. <laughs> I only got a short video, so I'm making this video since I have a short window. So, <laughs> But I just want to let you guys know that I literally was literally being sincere to this guy that literally asked me for services and literally I waited patiently for this man as a photographer and I, I am, guys, you know, I, I would stand and wait just because I know New Yorkers are never on time. <laughs> this is why I'm patient and waiting. This is why I have more patience than half of New Yorkers. No offense, New Yorkers, but I have more patience than you do. Just look at my videos, how I stand there for one hour, hours at a time <laughs> at some location or shooting at a location. I got the photography skills, that's why. I've got the skills as a photographer. I grew up with that patience as a photographer to have patience no matter what, even if I'm not doing photography. Just have patience. <laughs> Just have patience. It's going to come, this is what I'm telling people, why are you just trying to throw your angry words at me? Watch, and watch at some point in my life, at this point in time, 
everything that's been happening is going to go away. And then when I tell you guys, I told you so, be patient. Everything's going to work out according to plan. You guys are going to say, yeah, you know what? I need to just be patient. Trust me, guys. Just be patient. Things will happen. Sorry for the shaking ass. Yeah, the YouTube app sucks. No stabilization whatsoever. This is like, like I like watching premiums. But here's the thing about the YouTube app. If, if I don't schedule it, it won't notify you. If it does, it just don't want to connect. Yeah, it is a bug. And YouTube knows it. And even if I use a premiums live app, you guys don't see it for like 30 minutes. And you guys don't know I on because YouTube doesn't feed it. Because it's not directly a link source to their app. It's a third party app. So it causes problems. YouTube is causing problems. But I digress. So if you guys want to help out, grow this channel. This is why this is a sponsorless channel. Let me tell you why there's a lot of sponsorless channels that have more than 50 to 100,000 subscribers. Like Kayla, Kayla, Kayla Mark. He's a videographer. I just post one of his videos on my uh, community board. He's always been sponsorless for the last, what, 12, 14 years, 15 years on YouTube. This is why I don't like sponsorships. So you guys help create and help build up the channel by supporting the channels. This is why there are a lot of content creators that always actually to support the channel because we know how the sponsorship on this YouTube platform is broken. It's not a fair system. No matter what, how they tell you, it don't listen to what they tell you about percentage and how many views you're going to get. It's all a deep point. So they can make money and you wait, still make less. So with that said, always sponsor those channels that are sponsorless channels like me and everyone else. Man. Like a sponsorless channel. Like It's different if a brand sends you something. Right? They send you something and they want to sponsor that video. That's different. I'm talking about a sponsorless channel. Someone is not tied to any affiliations whatsoever. Their channel is completely all run by that person. There's no one in the backstages or no one telling someone what to do or, yeah. <laughs> so with that said, everyone, sorry for the shakiness. See? So with that said, everyone, I appreciate that Ibrahim for letting me know that the content is real because I'm just letting you guys know it is real. And this is why YouTube demonetizes it. There's some freedom of speech is like something they'd like to, like to uphold. So with that said, just take everything what I say with a grain of salt. But we hear that the spot voice. I'm trying to avoid the music for the uncopyrighted because it's kind of mumbling right now and every time I face the wind I notice that the volume just goes dim so it's, yeah I'm just waiting patiently still if people leave their trash on the floor yeah so with that said everyone I'm not sure if I should take a gamma and get in the hostel tonight I really want my I want to at least I want my stories my stuff to be safe and I wish the stories unit be kind of on point and tell me when they're gonna take the funds from my account Sometimes they take it two days prior. Sometimes they take it on the day when it's supposed to pay the bill. It's so confusing. <laughs> but I have it, and I'm just waiting for... Because if this guy would have came through today, guys, trust me, this video would have been somewhere... This live stream would have been at the hostel. You'd be like, wait, 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 how do you get the hostel? Ben, I'm like, secretly, I made a business negotiation. That was going to be the video today, too. I made a business negotiation last night, guys, with a guy that wanted my services last minute. And you guys would have been like, yay! You would have been happy. You guys would have been proud. You guys would have been like, see, it all works out, right? But that was my hope that I would make the content. But I, I didn't get the chance to do it. And some of you guys would have had a smile on your face and been like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, you know? Have that motivation. But I guess not. But this is still motivation of me. Because I'm positive, I'm still here, I'm still alive. I'm just letting, I'm telling my audience that I'm kind of disappointed by this ju this man's judgment and character. So, yeah. So, but I'm gonna, 
I don't know. Oh, we got a $45 donation. Thank you, Jonathan. Once again, see, Jonathan. So, Jonathan, I appreciate your donations, right? But you need to also know that I told you, you need to worry about yourself too and make sure that you're not donating too much to me because I will allocate all these donation taxes because I'd have to allocate them anyway at the end of the year when I swap for the taxes. So how much donations I get, because if you make a certain amount of donations, you have to report it. So I want to do things legally. And this is why I'm telling this guy last night that interrupted my live stream, like, I got my head together. I'm doing things legally, and I'm trying to stay out of trouble. I'm not even, even doing drugs and alcohol. Well, maybe now and then probably have a white claw or two. But it hasn't been like a white claw or two. It's been more like taking it easy and trying to figure out what to do with my health, you know? But I appreciate it, John, to then been very supportive. And anyway, Jonathan's been buying my friends. He's he bought like first of all guys, he bought a few friends and then I sent him free ones. So yeah. He's yeah and there's a you know Lord Brian guys. Lord Brian is a father. He he works for a community's uh organization that helps children learn and rebuild themselves into grown women and men for that future. For the next generation, Lord Brian, please. And by the way, his son is Iron Boy, very famous in California, by the way, a, a cancer f survivor. So go show your love to Lord Brian as well. You got Marissa, you got Phil, you got uh, Anthony, Andrew, you got Ahmad. You have I'm, I'm I'm talking to all my patrons as well too. Um, you got uh, what's his name from the Denmark? Uh, uh. I can never pronounce his name. He's on my Patreon, and he's, I don't know, sure, he's watching my videos, but he still is on my Patreon, and I appreciate it, all the way from Denmark. Uh, yeah, so I get love. <laughs> so, and I love Denmark, and so, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to go back there, but it's kind of hard, it's kind of it's not a nuisance getting into Denmark, but like flying, you know how you got to go to one airport to another airport. And if you need to go into Denmark, like so let's say I'm not going to Copenhagen. I'm going to, what's it called? Uh, you have to take a boat or a, a short flight to another island. Oh, my panda. <laughs> if you're from Denmark, you know what I'm talking about traveling there. It's not bad. It's just like... It's like, oh, wow. And then, like, it gets cold out there. Don't get me wrong. It gets super cold out there. But it's fun. Denmark has some great people. So, no doubt about that. But I appreciate everybody for, like, even mentally and emotionally supporting this channel. Because I kind of needed, after this guy, what he did today. Kind of needed it. I was, like, literally hope, I, Guys, I literally... Oh, shit, snap. I'm not using... The prim is live. I can't show you. Damn it. <laughs> YouTube, literate. Let prim is live be your new app. Because literally, you're just wasting time on this app. <laughs> but, Brittany, thank you. Brits, thank you for the support. But, everyone, thank you for the support. Keeping him, everybody, Lord Brian, Brooke K. And so, yeah, I'm hiding. I'm hiding Booker K. <laughs> David Oster, yeah, let me, and, and here's another big supporter, David Oster, guys, all the way from Australia. Now, let me tell you this, guys. A lot of people always talk shit about Australians. Let me tell you, man, I met the most cooling Australians. They're not. Here's the thing. Let me educate you black men, because I hear there's a lot from you black men and women. Like, I thought Australians were racist towards blacks. They hate blacks. Like, that's not true, friend. Like, <laughs> No, that's not true at all. <laughs> no, like David Orchard is like the like my he's like the father I w I wish I had. I said that so many times on the show. Like father figure to some of us photographers, very inspired, a mentor, entrepreneur, a father himself. You know, a community. The you can call him a community activist because he's in he's he's involved with so many art forms in the community. Ballet dancer, school of arts, you know, street photography, video. The guy is 
used to be a teacher. <laughs> so I know who I want in my family. I know who I want as my ally. So then that right there is a big part of why you guys should come to this channel and also subscribe to his channel. David Oster, please leave your link down in the channel so people can go to your channel and link up. So they can see your content. They can see your work. They can see as a father, as a photographer, you really provide not just an Australian audience, but an entire audience to the world. So this is why I'm telling people like you want to, you want to really, you want a real community. Yeah, sometimes I like to talk shit and I like to like really be the the focus point of being an activist or advocating for people like I was last night about the subway, about handicap. I see too many people with handicap disability are like, oh, I gotta walk up these stairs. And you know what I do sometimes? I literally, if the person can't walk up the stairs, guess what? Guess who I am to them? I'm that I'm that bridge. I'm that support. Oh, you want to use my back or my shoulder as support? Yes, please. Yes, that's a thing that people should be doing, but people don't do it. People don't care enough in the subway, New York City subway. You try to get off the subway, they try to keep you on the train. <laughs> like, this is my stop. I have a wagon. Excuse me. Move. Why are you trying to get in when I have this? You can't walk through this unless your vision from Avengers and you can fucking, you can literally, I don't want to say this, phase do shit. <laughs> you can't phase through the goddamn wagon. <laughs> why even try? <laughs> this is why I sometimes, I, when I travel a lot, it's it's comical with what people do when you travel, especially at Amtrak. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Lord Brian, for adding that link right there. Brian, you see, guys, please follow that link. Wait, wait, can I highlight that link? I think I can. Can one of my run moderators highlight that link? I can, why, why can I not do it? From here. That's weird. Lord Brian, you're a moderator. You can highlight your own comment. <laughs> Why won't let me on highlight the comment? That's so rude. YouTube, come on, friend. W.BrianBeatsTumor.wordpress.com That's his son's story, ladies and gentlemen. You should really check it out. It's expiring for young people and older people alike. And you don't need to, like, you know, have tragedy to understand. Understand because you have a heart. So with that said, everyone, go to support people, real people, not these bozos that are like, oh, yeah, like this. I'm not even calling the guy last night a bozo. I'm going to call him unprofessional because this is, his, this is his strike. He comes back into the channel. I'm like, listen, friend, that was kind of like very unprofessional. He's, I'm waiting here. I'm, I'm not just waiting here. I was waiting in Greenpoint. That's the thing. And a freaking cold in the park. So, like, you kind of offset me with that. And then, like, I literally had to spend 275 to get on a train, to come here, and then wait outside. And then, because there was too many people using the power. So, yeah, this is why I have, guys, as a traveler, please, I'm not sponsored. That's called a Ray Power Motor Port. Yes, it's a Ray Power Power station or whatever hub 10 watts each that's all you need <laughs> now if you want you want fast charging yes i have that i have that <laughs> i cover but this is important if you are using ports and people want to charge their phones you you should always offer people to charge their phones that's all i'm saying ladies and gentlemen i do it all the time this is why i have it because I know it's not fair for people that literally take up a socket. And why don't I just take one socket and just give most, pretty much, if you add it up, that's like two, four, six, that's like two additional sockets. So with that said, everyone, this is why I buy the rate power stuff, man. Really good. 
This one it goes up to 36 watts, I believe. Yeah, 36 watts, 18 watts each. But if your device supports 36 watts, it will hit 36 watts. And got it, by the way, I had this for the last two and a half years. I had this one for about almost three years. So they're a working product. You can see it still even has the writing on it. And this has been around Canada, Japan, uh, gonna pay it's, it's been due to this thing has survived COVID. <laughs> all these two survived COVID. Most of the stuff survived COVID. It's like, come on, friend. But with that said, everyone. But thank you, Jonathan, for the donation. I appreciate it, friend. Always, always a good, a, trust me, friend. Good things will happen to you, friend. Maybe find a good wife, have a good life, have some good children. Raise your children to know multiple languages, friends. Always do that. Even if it's Spanish or a little bit of like a Chinese or like a little bit Korean. I, and I recommend some European and some Asian languages, please. At least some French, you know, Francais, or like uh, uh, Korean or Japanese. You choose, like, come on. Imagine going up to a Korean and, and like, oh yeah, and say hello, and everyone's like, and the Korean guys like the Korean and people are around like oh, that, that guy speaks good Korean. Oh my god. People are really you don't understand how Japanese and Korean people are really, really amazed that someone like you took the time to learn their language, their culture. They really feel more empowered. They feel like they're part of something bigger. You guys give off that expression when you start commentating or you just love to be around people of all cultures and yeah, it's it gives people good a good vibe. I'm telling you guys, it's it's like drugs. <laughs> it's like a natural drug. <laughs> the best natural drug you're gonna get. But with that said, everyone, I'm just trying to give you some context. Well, keep in mind if you do go to Japan, like listen, I'm not trying to get people not to go to Tokyo, but like Tokyo's a great place, but. Trust me when I'm telling you, if you go to the countryside of Japan, more more Japanese are surprised that you left city life to come to our countryside. That's like, you get, you, you, you tell them that you don't want to experience that right now. You want to see what Japan really has to offer, cultural, food-wise, spiritual, you know, who-wise, you know, you need to go to the countryside because sometimes in the city, you have these restaurants that are like, it's fast food, and Japanese fast food, but some Japanese make it, it's like ramen. You guys know the big thing about ramen, you got to make your broth by scratch and sell it like blah, 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 right? There's a reason why you should make your ramen by scratch, right? And I can show you a technique how you can take spaghetti noodles. And then, you know what? I'm not even going to show you how to make that. I'm going to tell you how to make and change the, the texture of spaghetti noodle into like a ramen noodle. All you need is baking powder, baking soda. You put the baking soda in the boiling water and it literally chemical or the chemistry of that water changes the context of that of the spaghetti and it gives that noodle texture, not that spaghetti texture. So when you buy into that spaghetti texture that now turns into noodle texture, it tastes and it, and it has that noodle texture. So that's a tip, baking powder, ladies and gentlemen, boiling water. You change the chemistry of the water. And by the way, always use clean water, not faucet water because it changes the intensity and taste of ramen, so I recommend using fresh, clean, grade A stilt water or grade A pure, clean water for a better outcome. Trust me, any ramen professional would say, Pan is right. <laughs> Pan is right. I can't be wrong about ramen. That's just idiotic. I grew up on that stuff. I know how to make that stuff. It's so simple. And yes, I even know how to make pork broth too. So, 
and I did it for my parents. So to prove to them that I can do it because they were messing with me one day. It's like, you don't want to touch the fucking broth. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I make the pork broth. I'll, I'll oh, by the way, make sure that when you're cooking the broth, make sure it doesn't exceed over 195 or 190 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit because you want to keep, you don't want it to boil. You want just a bubble now and then coming up. And you want to get rid of that skim. That's sometimes you're going to have to look at the pot over a certain amount of time, over like an hour. This is a process, guys. But you're going to have to take the skim off that. So, to, yeah. Make sure you always take the skim so you have a clean broth, guys. Clean broth. That's important. And use some type of like strainer with, with like, uh, banana paper, so it's a clean broth. Please do that. Or scalp paper or like, yeah, or something. Like, trust me. You got to strain it through like a strainer and make sure you use, yeah, trust me. You want it crispy, clear, and broth. And like I said, there's layers. But that broth, it's not going to be like the final result because that's just a layer. And now keep in mind that like it's not as salty because it's less salt. And this is when you're going to make your oil or your aroma oil. And you can make this by scratch too. Your aroma oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, got, you, you, you ramen fans don't know I'm talking about the aroma oil. You can make You can make scallop oil. You can make a garlic scallop oil if you want. Yeah. That's, it's up to you. Just make sure you use the olive oil and you cook it, the, the garlic or whatever you cook to make your aroma oil. Or yeah. uh, No, this strange. Listen, this is Starbucks. <laughs> people, people come and go, friend. <laughs> people come and charge their phones and have coffee or tea. <laughs> Glenn, I, I was saying that self. I was saying that to myself as I was, you know, conversating with you guys just now, and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> Glad to see you too, friend. But mind you, learn a little bit of Japanese. Just trust me, learn a little bit of Japanese, and you, you'll get by. It's not hard. Some people are like, "Oh, it's so hard." No, it's not. <laughs> if I know it, if I can speak it and, 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 and educate you guys a little bit about it, yes, I can. It's easy. It's not hard. People make it seem hard. Because that's the motivation. They don't even know the, how, how well they can do it. See, that's the thing. You teach people how to do something, they think they do not skill that, and then and when they catch on, they get addicted, and now they become something even greater than better. <laughs> It's actually, it's Kumbawa, it's for good evening. And it's K-O-N-B-A-N-W-A. So, close. And Kumbawa is a city in Japan. So, and I used to live there actually. <laughs> That's what's on my case. Cause I didn't also live in Osaka before. I, I moved away from Osaka for like three years. Went sur sur further south. Come back to you. Oh, oh, Glenn and it. Oh, you got, you got to try this. Oh. Okay, friend. Not even six feet apart. <laughs> Glenn, stop. <laughs> Are you guys reading what Glenn's writing in the comments? <laughs> Glenn, that's not nice. I know. People just like, didn't say, I know. That's. I think about Japanese culture also. Everyone says it's a, everyone is most everyone is conservative and very polite. But people always say excuse me, which is on cinema say it's good get but you guys get it. everyone says excuse me, everyone's polite, everyone, everyone always acts before they do action. That's important in Japan. Always acts. <laughs> I did not. I've been waiting for this guy. And he didn't show up in the emails. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna leave this on my website that 
clients. Please don't ask me for services and then last minute and say that you need someone for the next day. I get my gear ready. I get my batteries charged and you don't show up. I appreciate that, friends. I prefer the cash app. I like the cash app now since there's less bugs, but still there's bugs because... Uh, the NTA keeps trying to charge my card. I, I, and cash app says, hey, it's not us, it's dumb. I'm like, okay, I'm just letting you know since I've been in New York, it's been doing that. The NTA charging me at 324 every single morning since I've been what, for the last three more days. <laughs> What's up with that? That's not nice. Taking money for no reason. And then you see why. Oh, yeah, by the way, everybody, I did post on Instagram a very important video. How many guys, you got to watch that video. I just post. And Jonathan, please share that post that I did post where people hop in the subway. Yes, people were hopping the fence that literally had a train right over it or the train tracks. And people were literally not paying their fare. Jonathan, please show them because it's going to blow your freaking minds away. Thank you, uh, Glenn, for the $30 donation. The super the support in the channel. It's a Maserati. That's a pretty nice Maserati. I'm not a really big fan of the. The ass shape on the back, but the front looks nice. You guys know how I know my ass, I know my Maseratis because, uh, and oh my pattern, like Paris, man, you guys tried that. Mm. It, it, it's either Maseratis or Jaguars <laughs> and sports cars. <laughs> but thank you, Glenn, for the $30 donation. Appreciate that, friend. We almost did. We almost, Glenn, honestly, your donations and Jonathan's donation were paid for almost two nights. Almost. Almost. <laughs> you see that, guys? But we want to hang out. I'm going to show you one Starbucks down here. It is like uh, in the Astro place. Or technically, uh, this is like a. If you walk past this street, that's so that's Noho. You walk it down this way, that's East Village. You walk towards this way, that's going towards like uh, Union Square. You walk behind me, that's going towards like Noho, but also eat the West Village. So, <laughs> like in other directions, yeah, you can pick and choose where you want to pick your poison. <laughs> pick your poison. You got four poisons. Pick it: East, West, South, North. <laughs> so yeah that's what i think that's how i'm a traveler that's how i see things right now i'm central so if i'm facing this way that's north because if i'm facing this way that's south that's east because that's common sense that is east <laughs> and right behind me is west and we launched him on this sucky youtube app that has no stabilization. Kind of sucks. App doesn't have stabilization. This is why I love the Premix Live app. Just, just love it. The city, yeah. This is why I love the stabilization. I love the bitrate controls. I love that you actually can control the autofocus. It's like, come on. And you can do other things with the app. Now, YouTube does have some app features that Premium's Live do have, like, a, let's see here. Like filters, ooh, we have those, but we never use those. Yeah, I don't, we don't use these filters. They trash. Look at these filters. Ooh. So it's, 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 yeah, it's, come on, friend. I, talk big. Oh, that's our coffee, friend. That's, that's a, it, it, pure, that's an influence cloud tea. I don't like, I know, you guys are going to say this, man. 
Why you don't like coffee, Pat? Huh? I don't like the bitterness. It's, it's bizarre. Good evening, Kit Kat, and good evening, Big Talk. So, yeah. But, I I told you guys, I don't eat much candy, but I told you guys I like the Dorian candies. And look, I love these Chinese Dorian candies, man. Oh, my panda. So I do get my sugar content. This is why I was turning to the doctor. Like, I do get some type of sugar content. But, anyway, guys. Coffee is rotten. I am a cup tea man myself. Yeah, I'm a tea guy. So, and I like Jap. So I have a very particular palate about Japanese and Korean teas. I'm a big fan of some of the whites, and I'm a big fan of some of the they they they, they, they purge teas, which are like seasonal only. Oh my panda! Oh, you go to any. Like, uh, let's say it's springtime in Japan. It's like a cherry blossom season and you're in Japan. Certain tea shops in Japan have a certain tea that's only seasonal. And it's like, it could be a little expensive, but oh my God, that blows your way. But with that said, everyone, thank you so much for the love and the conversation and the support. Oh. That's right. There's no. But just wanted to have a conversation in the, in the, in the Starbucks and let you guys know this client didn't show up. And I, I'm going to let him know, like, as a, as a French slash, you know, you know, you know what? As a man with respect of black. And he's, I'm pretty sure he's, he's an African American. From another black man to another black man. Don't do that. <laughs> He sounded. Like a black man, you know, like, you know, the, the way he used words. So, yeah. Oh, what? Really? Wow, Glenn, you're, you're literally trying to. Oh, so you guys want another video tomorrow. I can do that for you guys tomorrow. I can set up a live stream tomorrow. Which we, what do you want guys want to. But here's the question. If I say, if I, if I go do this, where do you want me to do the live stream at? Now, we did Harlem. So, where do you want me to do the next live stream? And please do not say the Bronx. <laughs> How you doing, Lutch Lutch? Good to see everybody in here, man. It's very great. They give you oversized boots. Here's the thing. I haven't been eating ramen because I've been listening to the doctor. So I'm being on my best behavior not to eat ramen. So it's been on my best behavior not to eat ramen. Especially the spicy ramen or... He knows, because I told him, like, listen, I can make my own broth. Give me a day, and I can make you some, give me two days. I make you the best broth. Oh, my God. Uh, trust me, two days work waiting for ramen from me or anyone that's really good at cooking broth. And by the way, anyone, any chef would tell you, like, it's kind of easy to make it at home if you have the patience. And by the way, you're probably going to go to Walmart and find some of these ingredients. If you cannot find, like, for instance, MSG, or there is an American version of MSG. I forgot the American brand. It's liqueur, I think. It's called Ascent. Yeah, that's an MSG. You can use that as a substitute if you don't have combo or, yeah. So just FYI. <laughs> Tanner, you should be working back in the kitchen. No. If I will, it'd be my parents' kitchen. It won't be. I just I, I realized trying to work for a restaurant business here and having them see my resume, like, oh wait, you can 
you you like oh we have a what? Why why is this restaurant? This is why I get that question a lot. Why this restaurant? Why not? Like why not give your restaurant a fair chance to see if I can learn something? Right? See, that's what people don't think about interviewing someone that's literally it's not about oh I need a job. No. It's not because I need a job. It's like I want to see where I can go, how far I can get. And this particular restaurant establishment, which is not in my own category. I'm trying to think outside the box as a chef or a, 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 a cook or yeah, sous chef. Yeah, I'm trying to think outside the box, yeah. You know, you know who you should get your cupcakes from? Oh my panda. So I have a friend, she's Jewish and she lives here in Brooklyn. I met her through Sedimentary Bakery and we are allies, but uh, she makes Guys, if you have an Instagram, please. Her name is Alice Alexa Rose. It's all one word, Alexa Rose. Oh, oh my panel, wait till you see her food. You're gonna be like, what, these are her cakes? Yes, specially designed custom cakes, all oh, my panda. And if you have an allergy, she can substitute it. Yeah, she's amazing at what she does. I wish she was on my YouTube channel and, and I've been telling her to make a YouTube channel and literally, she should have her own fucking reality show because she's really good and she's a good mom. So, yeah, try to support. Oh, it's not just thick and creamy. It's like perfect. Not too over, like, not how you eat a cake and when, not how you eat a cake and you get like, you get like sort of a weight into the cake and then like the cream is so feeling and so too much sugar that it literally overpowers the bread, the, the, the cake itself and the texture, right? It's just her cakes, her creams are just balanced, friend. Just, it's just balanced. It's just balanced, friend. It's like, you, oh wow, what is that? Uh oh, people are going crazy. Someone screaming at someone, telling someone to shut up. Oh, my panda. Are we going to see a confrontation in Starbucks? Yeah, and I'm not sure she ships. I know, I'm know i pretty sure she can probably ship domestically, but I don't know. I need to ask her that. I'm pretty sure she had done it a few times. Someone from Instagram like, oh, I want your cake, but I live in Colorado. <laughs> And you can always take a cake dry ice, but how would they send it without even dropping it? I don't know. That'd have to be some really special care. <laughs> Someone's arguing over there. Uh oh. Someone's arguing over there. I don't know what that's about. Uh oh. Here's a, here's a Starbucks employee about to go over there and kill it. Well, just relax. Listen, it's too cold for this right now. <laughs> it literally is too cold. Hey, do you guys want to buy these guys some, some angry coffee? Because they look like they need some angry coffee. <laughs> I say that's Aiden Carvey has like Starbucks coffee, but they need to cool down and warm up a little bit. I know it's really brutal out there. You see? Oh my panda. This is why we don't like Starbucks, because there's too much confrontation <laughs> sometimes. But like Glenn said, it is New York. <laughs> It is New York. Thank you, friends, for jo joining us in the live stream. So I'm going to head back to the hostel and uh, check in tonight. And uh, they were here's the thing. This is what the staff said yesterday. They was like, hey, Panda, I'd rather have you here and some other guys. Because I've read the reviews recently. I'm pretty disappointed. You, know, you guys are literally... I'm very disappointed at some of the reviews 
for the more hostile because first and foremost, someone left a review saying that uh, like I'm, I'm, let me give you some context. There are there are two women or three housekeepers doing a whole bunch of rooms. Give them time. Trust me, they do the job very well. Someone wrote a comment saying that it was dirty, it was not very tarbo. It looked at, it's in a, it's in a, 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 a shady spot. Yes, they said it was in a shady spot and it, it looks kind of dodgy. I was like, wait, wait, wait. So you think HI is, it's, it's, it's upright cool? No, that place is even dodgier. No offense, HI New York City, but I have my experience with you guys and I used to be the filler and I used to support you. <laughs> and I can tell you right now, New York Hostel, the, the HI in my hostel will rip you off and charge you three twice as much more for that room. And not only that, the Wi-Fi at the HI is literally up and down. You won't get a stable Wi-Fi connection. And not only that, it's not really cleanable drinking and accessible. There is drinkable, clean, accessible water. But in each floor, as you saw my 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 videos on that hostel twice it's hot water not cold water oh yeah if you guys didn't see my post about can water talk yes <laughs> water can talk if you ever go to chemistry class i i, I left my reasons why but <laughs> but anyway yeah i i wouldn't recommend some someone left a very some people left some very choice of words uh, towards the hostel saying that the hostel is okay but it's dodgy and like it's in the it's in back of the warehouse like not every fucking hostel is going to be in the middle of smackdown in the middle of the city there's a reason why some hostels do not want to be in smackdown in the middle of the city because they don't want to have complication with a lot of homeless a lot of problems with outside other businesses trying to say oh you bring this you bring a too much people to the establishment causes my business to lose. Yeah, that's happened sometimes. You can think about the fundamentals where a hostel needs to be placed. This is why you guys don't know shit of, no, no offense, those that did visit the, the more hostel. You, you want to cater to the HI. Let me explain how the HI wasn't always the HI in New York City. New York City used to have three HI locations that turned into that one location up in one third in Amsterdam. They should have one one in here in Soho, one in Tribeca, and one in Chelsea. So they took all three hostels and brought, like 15 years ago, and brought that historical school from the owners and from the city. And now that historical school is now a hostel. So that's how that started, ladies and gentlemen. I know that because, as I said, I've been with HI for a long, long, long time. Very long time. I know where they buy their properties. <laughs> hey, John. Oh, yeah, since you're here, John. John, when you wrote in the comments, Gypsy, did you realize that, like, Sometimes using that word, based on how you use it, can be very demeaning. But in New York City, we have experienced gypsies stealing people's belongings. Not saying that they do that on a daily basis or anything like that. But I experienced that myself in the Lower East Side. Right, Yuki? 12 years ago, we were at that pizza shop. And you wanted pizza, Yuki. And we were sitting right there with her laptop. We turned our backs for 10 seconds to get garlic and the, the pep, and, the, and the chili pepper. And the woman tried to walk off with the laptop. And the guy was like, oh, that's that gypsy woman. And from what we were told, a lot of gypsies on East Houston would try to like, before they rebuilt that whole place. So, <laughs> so. Yeah, you call me a gypsy. I'm like, I didn't. Why are you calling me a gypsy? <laughs> I'm not a gypsy, but it's the way he he used it. It's like, no, I'm not a gypsy. I'm panda. 
That's the first time someone called me a jet head. I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> That's bizarre. <laughs> Hello. That is so bizarre. Someone calls me that. I didn't know what to say. And I was like, huh? I was so confused. Like, why are you calling me that? That is, huh? <laughs> At least you could just say, hey, Chocolante. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, people used to call me that in Japan. Chocolante, they used to call me, uh, 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 they used to call me Nestle Snipes at one point. <laughs> They're like, you're Snipes. I'm like, what? Because I was, like I said, guys, I was doing martial arts. So they call me Nestle Snipes. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of fun with Japanese kids calling me Nestle Snipes. Like, oh, he's a Nestle, Nestle Snipes. I'm like, no, that dude, no. That dude is too skilled. <laughs> but with that said, everyone, thank you for the hour of your time, your conversation. Thank you for taking the time to even pick up your devices, your phone, to see what was going on. But we're going to get out of here very soon and uh, let's head on to the hostel and let's get another hostel experience. And I'm pretty sure staff like, yeah, hey, Panda, you came back. I said, like, I told you I was going to come back. But here's a question, guys. As long as you don't call you, call you Steven Seagal, oh, you call me Steven Seagal, I'm going to literally fucking come to your house. I'm going to show you some Steven Seagal. A lot of Japanese don't respect him anymore. So this is where he's like, come on. Like, like, a lot of Japanese don't give him that respect anymore. Like, the way he... First of all, Kikaido, you, you know what, the way he practiced that, 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 that form of like martial arts, of Japanese martial arts, he's like, he, he's not really doing, yeah. He used to do when he was younger, yes. Now he's, you know, like wash up, what a, what a joke. What a joke. He's a joke. Yeah, he's a joke. Steven Seagal is a joke. I'm sorry, guys, that you're fans of his, yes. I'm still fans of his old movies. Don't get me wrong, but now he's a he's, he's a joke. <laughs> no one in Japan respects him anymore. Like, and the only time Japan does respect him because they do respect him at a certain level. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they don't, but when there's like a, a like a, a a tournament going on or a dojo tournament or something, and he's there, yes, people show him respect because he did learn. But now it's like. You're not even trying. People are just throwing themselves. Yes, you learn how to throw yourself. And yeah, you know you learn how to throw yourself. If you never learned that in martial arts or karate or jiu-jitsu or yeah, you learn how to throw yourself. So you know how to feel. Yeah. I I just can't explain it any better. But dude's a joke, you're right. But with that said, everyone, I waited for this guy. I just want to let this guy know, listen, friend, I did this live stream at the end of the day on purpose so I can let my audience know that you stood me up. And this is business, friend. I mean, I'm in New York for business, not to play games. So the, I should, if I were you, friend, take this with a grain of salt. Like, don't get mad when I'm about to say it, but I'm mad at the fact that you showed a lack of responsibility as an adult to not pick up your phone, text, or email me and say, listen, uh, things came up. I'm sorry. I, I, I hope I had your your hopes up high and everything. Come on, friends. It's like literally, eh. like I could have gone to someone else last night and like went off to a God knows Connecticut, Boston. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, oh. No, see in Vancouver, do you not? Yeah, they would make sure no one sees the stories you're not. Yeah, <laughs> they used to do that stuff back in the day, so now they make sure that no one does it. That's why they have hours now. But with that said, everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, this guy's this guy's never left his eye off his phone since we did live stream. <laughs> This guy has not left his phone. Like his eyesight is glued to that phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh my panda. I, I... 
You mighty close there. Oh yeah, that's my Tinder date. <laughs> my Tinder date. That's a good one. That's a really good one, friends. Oh my time that you guys make you guys make me laugh. So yeah, he's my he's my Tinder date. Meet Rashad, everybody, Rashad. Audience, audience, Rashad. <laughs> Where, where are we going? Are we going to get some soul food tonight? Or are we going to get some, some Spanish food? You know, we don't have, what, what, what are you doing? Are we going to smoke the weed? Or... <laughs> oh, my tendon. So with that said, ooh, what is that? Ugh. You guys have a good one. Let's head off to the hostel. And I'll see you when I get there. When I get there. How I get there. Oh, my tendon.